Hear the Holy Gospel according to our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, the leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. And Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light, because their works are evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light, and does not come into the light, lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. So please be seated. The, um, the children at the school do a series of classes with me in the uh, in the year six, and after those, then I consider them, if they wish, ready to be confirmed if they want it. And it, I, I consider that as part of the whole thing to do at the school, which is we do the assemblies, which are all the Bible stories, we do the prayer spaces where the children can maybe learn to pray if they wish, and they can learn to express their feelings and their thoughts and their desires and their hopes and their fears, all that kind of thing. And also with the classes, it kind of adds another layer to the whole thing. And I'm, I'm trying to show them how to think about things and how to relate to Scripture, to the Bible. And so they look at all these things. And one of the things which, the, the first thing I start off with is that there is a world which is not a physical world, but it is real. If you like, there's an aspect of life which is not physical, it is not material, but it is real. And there are things about this life which move us in a way that you can't see how it starts, but you can see how it ends. So in the same way that a tree moves in the wind, you can see how people are moved. You can see how they, they do things, or how they act, or how they think, because of what is inside of them. And those, some of those things which I talk about, the things which are real, but which you can't sort of see as such, you can't touch, are things like goodness, and truth, and beauty. And beauty is not really that valued now. It's curious, isn't it? There was a time when beauty was very highly prized. When you think, how many times have you seen recently a building put up with the idea that it should be beautiful? And how many buildings that are new look beautiful? If you think of a beautiful building, how many of the ones you think of are kind of old? And if you 
you think about, like I, I talked about the trees coming up and how the mist sort of rests on the trees sometimes in the damp weather, and I think that's really beautiful. But it is a lovely thing, but it's not, I don't think, a meaningless thing. It's lovely to see the children growing up. There's something beautiful about them. There's something lovely about their faces, but also about inwardly. If they're good kids, if they've got good hearts, if they're honest, if they're kind, if they want to learn about good things, there's something lovely about that, something beautiful about that. And that's not meaningless, is it? That's not a trivial thing. That's not a, a tiny thing at all. That is, I think, a big thing. That's something well worth having. And when, um, when the children were small, I used to get these little kids. And we used to get a, like some a caterpillar eggs. And the, the caterpillar kit would come with a little kind of pot of food. So we didn't have to get the right kind of leaves for the caterpillars, because the caterpillars would eat this kind of pot of food stuff that we used to give them. It didn't look very nice, but the caterpillars seemed to think it was all right. And they'd eat this stuff, and they'd gradually go bigger and bigger, they'd get fatter and fatter and fatter. And to be honest, it wasn't that picturesque, because caterpillars aren't that pretty, but really. And they used to leave all these little pellets of their kind of refuse, you might say. So it used to be a bit kind of gungy, in a way wasn't actually that picturesque. But the good part was, eventually they'd form a chrysalis and then we would get a butterfly. And we had this little kind of box thing made of mesh, so that when they hatched out, we'd get these butterflies in this little box and then we'd give them some sugar water to drink. And then we could let them go in the garden and then fly around and hopefully go off and make more caterpillars. But the the whole thing is rather lovely to see how this, this caterpillar, which isn't that beautiful, the caterpillar is a very kind of mundane thing really, isn't it? It just kind of plods around eating whatever it eats. And then it grows into this butterfly. And it's amazing to see, isn't it? How this thing, which looks a bit like a colourful slug, becomes this thing with the beautiful wings and then can fly. And to see that transformation between the caterpillar and the butterfly is an amazing thing. It's an extraordinary thing really, isn't it? I mean, I still don't really understand how it happens that this caterpillar makes this little thing around itself and then bursts out, completely transformed. How does it kind of do that? How does the, the body of one become the body of the other? I don't know. But that kind of transformation is the kind of thing Jesus is talking about in this passage with Nicodemus, about being born again or born from above. The way it's written there, originally, it could mean born from above, or it could mean born again. The same, the word means both. And I think personally, Jesus means to kind of give us both those ideas at the same time. He's saying that we need another start in life. We need something about us to kind of transform us into something else. As dra dramatic as transformation as being born when we were tiny. But also that this thing which brings about this transformation in us is something which comes from above, from heaven. And I think the Lord wants us to think about both these things at the same time. And if you think about some people seem to go through life like caterpillars. All they want to do is eat and drink and then go at the end of it. And that's it. That's the limit of their worldview. But a lot of people think, well, there must be more to life than that. It can't be just that. But I think you're absolutely right, there is more to life than that. And there is another if you like, dimension to life beyond that. In the same way that a caterpillar can become a butterfly and then fly, we can become something more. We can be transformed into something more. And as Jesus says, you can't see the kingdom of heaven unless you're born from above, or born from the... Uh, again. Unless you're born, he says, of water and the spirit. Or water and breath, water and wind. Because again, it's the same word. Wind, breath, spirit is the same word in the original. So, something about us comes from heaven to bring about this transformation in us, which is a dramatic one. It somehow makes us different in a real way, but which initially will look the same physically. I saw it very dramatically in a film once where a gangster, huge bloke, big sort of South American type in America, he was a massive guy, and he, the, this man was filming him in prison. He'd been arrested for something. And he was dressed in sort of shabby, like, 
dirty looking black clothes, he had these sunglasses on. So he looked like a gangster, he looked like a real yob, like a real like, thug type. He did not look a nice bloke. And he was a huge fat bloke, a massive guy. And he was arrogant. Like the way he was speaking in prison. Oh, I'll do anything, oh, I'll write this, I'll write that, I'll write the other, you know. He was a horrible bloke. A really, really nasty piece of work. He was violent, he was boasting about his violence, he was cruel, he was arrogant, he was crooked, he was dishonest. He was everything. I mean, he was a horrible bloke. And he was big and he was intimidating. So he looked the part. But something happened to him. Something changed him. And then the same guy that was filming him, filmed him a little while later, in the park. He wasn't in prison at that time, I'm not quite sure what happened. And he was wearing different clothes, and he didn't have his sunglasses on. But he was so distinctive in his appearance, his physical appearance, he was this, still this massive bloke, that you couldn't mistake him for anyone else. But everything about him was different. Everything, his manner, his attitude, his, his way of speaking. He's obviously the same bloke, but he is different. He's profoundly different in a way that's extraordinary. He has stopped being that horrible, arrogant, violent, cruel gangster. He's become someone else. An extraordinary transformation. And it's come about because he's been born from above. He's been changed. He's met the Lord. He's believed. He's repented. He's turned from death to life. And in his case, the life of death was the life of him killing people, basically. And it would probably end with him being executed at some point. It would catch up with him. So in his case, the life of death is very sort of graphically illustrated. But he's turned to life. He's found something better. And he's been changed. And that dramatic transformation is incredible. But in his case, it was dramatic because he was so horrible before. But that transformation is something that's available to anyone. Because all of us at heart begin life as caterpillars. That's what we like. We go around eating leaves and not much else. But as we grow up, we get a chance to become something else. To turn into something else. We can be born again, born from above. Born of water and spirit, or water and breath, water and wind as Jesus puts it. We can, if you like, begin to change into a butterfly. Something beautiful, something wonderful, something which is different and yet somehow the same. And that's the heart of the message of the Gospel. Now, there's this amazing line in this chapter, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. That's the whole point of everything, isn't it? That's the whole point of the Gospel. It's the whole point of Jesus becoming a man, of the, of the, the Bible. That's what it's for, if you like. And yet so many people around us just want to be caterpillars. It's kind of tragic, really, isn't it? It's a denial of the reality of beauty, of goodness, of truth. Because these things are real. Because a part of us wants to see beyond the things around us. We want to see that glimpse into heaven. There's a part of us wants something else, don't we? There's a part of us wants something more than what we've got already. Not in a bad way, like an evil way, just we feel there's something not quite happened or not quite complete or not quite there yet. And I think most people feel it most at some time. In the, in the psalm, we get this glimpse of heaven. Ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly beings, you've met with sons of God. Ascribe to the Lord. And he sees this amazing sort of dramatic vision of the Lord shaking the wilderness of Kadesh, making the hills skip like calves, and stripping the forest bare, and all this kind of stuff. It's an idea that God is so huge and so powerful and so majestic over everything else, he just shakes it like a blanket. And that's 
But then it, it finishes the psalm, may the Lord give strength to his people, may the Lord bless his people with peace. So after all the storm and the tempest, after all the shaking of the world and the earthquakes and after all that stuff, at the end of it it says, may the Lord bless his people with peace. As if all that power and glory and majesty has actually come to us in the form of peace. Now Isaiah sees this amazing vision when he went to the temple when he was presumably a young man. And he saw the Lord high and lifted up and the train of his robe filled the temple. And above him stood the seraphim, the angels, the burning ones. And they sing together, the seraphim, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. And the temp foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And Isaiah is overwhelmed with this sense that there is something wrong with him. Oh, woe is me, he says. I've seen a glimpse of heaven. I've seen a glimpse of something else. And oh my God, I'm not like that. What am I going to do? I'm lost. And the Lord reaches out. The angel comes and touches his mouth with a hot coal and says, But sin is covered. Your guilt is atoned for. You're covered. It's okay. It's the reaching out of peace again. And then Isaiah has this call. Who will go? He says, I will go. And that mouth, which is touched by the coal, becomes a mouth that speaks all these words that Isaiah the prophet spoke. But then Paul says we're, we're debtors not to live to the flesh, to live according to the flesh, you know, to live like caterpillars. Because if we live according to the flesh, like caterpillars, you'll die. But if by the Spirit you put to deed death the deeds of the body, you will live. If by that spirit, if by the breath, you stop being caterpillars, you don't just live like that. You can live. And that breath on you, the presence of God on you, will come and make you to children of God, sons and daughters of the Most High. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, the sons by whom we cry, Papa, Father. If you hear little kids in Israel calling out to their parents, like seeing a little toddler trotting around, that's what they cry out, that's what they shout out. Abba, Abba, Abba. Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. And again, you see the power and the majesty of God, but then the tenderness as he invites us to call him basically Daddy. Like a little, like a little tiny child hanging onto Daddy's hand. He invites us to hold his hand and walk with him. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. If we've gone through this transformation, we've been born from above, we've been born of water and the breath of God, we have become children of God. And if children then heirs, and then we're invited to walk with him, to hold his hand like little children, to go through life. Come into the light, it says at the end of that reading from John. The light has come into the world. Jesus, the light, has come into the world to invite us to walk into the light with him. To be born from above is to walk in that light. And the scripture testifies that these things are real. The caterpillars can't see them. But if we would, we can receive those words, we can receive the breath of God, we can be born again of the water and the wind, we can become children of God, we can become cat butterflies, we can catch the glimpse of heaven and then at the end rise up to be with him. And that's the gospel of the Lord, that's the good news in Christ Jesus. And he did all this, not because we're beautiful or good of ourselves, but because he loves us and wants to make us beautiful and good. And it's our gift to choose whether we want that for ourselves or not. May the Lord give you, bless his people with the blessing of peace.